Welcome to the Watts 3010 Hello World assignment. Um, this is the first assignment in the Introduction to HTML and CSS course here uh, in, at Watts at Seattle University. And in this assignment, we will be creating a web page, hosting it on GitHub GH pages, um, and becoming a little bit familiar with what goes into a web page. So uh, to start with, you're going to navigate to this repository in the SU Web Dev. So this SU Web Dev is our course account on github.com. And we speak of accounts as holding repositories. So the Watts 3010 Hello World is a repository. And that just is a place where we store files. And they can be versioned. So github.com is going to work with Git, the, a program you can run locally to manage your files and keep track of them in a versioned way. So when you come to a repo, you see a list of files. And readme.md is a file that you will and should always see um, on, a, on a GitHub repository. And it's MD stands for Markdown. It's just a form of code that, um, a code formatting technique, kind of like HTML is markup. Uh, MD is marked down, and it allows you to format your text and add images and things like that. So you'll always look for a README markdown, and that's where instructions will appear for what to do. And in this, in this assignment, we can see at the bottom of this, there's a picture of what our final project will look like locally when we are hosting it and previewing it locally. We're going to have a black background and a red hello world. And um, if you want to add more things, um, I don't have any stretch goals here, but you're free to add an image. Um, I'll be looking for red and black here to know that you've gone through these steps. But I'm also happy to see students add on to the pages that we and the work that we assign to, to augment the requirements. So as you come in here, um, you want to read through the instructions and kind of get an overall idea about what you're going to be doing. Look at the picture. HTML and CSS, are, our ultimate product is visual. And it can really help if you kind of understand visually where you're headed. So take a look at this picture and see that you're headed toward hosting. And here I'm hosting it locally. So you can see the URL 127. That is the local host URL. Um, and you, in fact, when you're done, this will be hosted on the internet, as well as, as being able to look at it locally. So let's get in and take a look at getting these instructions done so that we can meet the requirements of this project. So in general, I'm not going to read you each and every instruction, but we will look at these closely and make sure that, that it makes sense what to do. Um, but nobody likes to have something read to them that they can read for themselves. So I, I might not read you each and every bit of the instructions, but we will definitely go through them. So the first thing to get this going is you need to sign up for a github.com account. And here you can see that I am, I am actually signed up, github.com. You can see over here I have my, I'm signed in too. So <clears throat> when you, if, I'm, if I'm not signed in, I'll sign out here. You can see what it looks like when you either don't have an account or you're not signed into it. And um, so you can see that I could sign up for GitHub. So you would click on that and create just a username and password. It's free, so you don't have to um, pay anything for this. Um, so let's sign in. And I am actually my Rebecca Peltz at Gmail. And once I'm signed in, you can see over here, it, it shows me under here, I can actually go look at my repositories. Over here, you see some of the things that I've been working on recently. So these each represent chunks of code for a project. And I'm on some other teams over here. So um, it's good to kind of familiarize yourself with this GUI. And um, normally, though, I'm going to go right into my repositories. So this is kind of the link you might want to bookmark. And it shows kind of what I've been working on most recently. And, um, I, and, and this is all, most of it's public. Some of it's private. You can now make private repositories for free. Um, but people can come and view your work. And um, 
So I won't go into all the details now, but basically, we, you know, you might want to put your picture up there and um, this is a good way. This would be something that will actually go on your final portfolio. So looking back at the instructions, we've got our GitHub account. Configure Secure Shell on your machine. So there are instructions for that in an FAQ. Um, but if I go out to the command line, let's see, not that, but the command line. And PWD, that prints my working directory. I can see I'm in this video 3010. But um, what you'll end up once you've done this, and I recommend coming to lab to get help doing this or working with an instructor online. It's the first time you do set up SSH. It can be a little bit, you know, it's different and you're not probably not something you've done every day. But if I do, so PWD shows me I'm here. Um, if I do ls list files, um, I can see tilde slash dot um, SSH, this is showing me tilde slash takes me to my home, shows me my home directory, and dot SSH is a hidden directory that keeps track of secure shell or SSH files, and these are the files that contain keys that allow for encryption, and ultimately the reason we do this is we want to be able to push our code to github.com from our local machine, and um, this is where you're going to do that. And there are videos that walk you through both Windows and Mac um, setting up SSH. But you can see I've got this set up. And um, the thing that you would do next is, let's say I'm going to cat. So it can catenate to the screen the ID uh, RSA, RSA pub. This is my public key. And this key has been copied into github.com. So you should have already done this before you start on this project. And there, are, again, are videos for that. So yes, that would have been copied if you go out to your settings and you look at SSH keys. And you can see I've got a number of SSH keys. But um, from my SU Mac, here's that key, that public key. So that is setting up Secure Shell, and then install and configure Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to assume that you have Visual Studio Code running and that you've probably got it, some plugins in there, live server to help you out with this assignment. So to complete this assignment, we're going to start by forking this repo into our GitHub account. And so to fork it, and this you'll see these uh, options buttons on every GitHub repo, you, to fork it, which you're going to kind of copy it to our own account, I just type in fork. I just click the fork button. So again, be sure you're sitting in this SU Web Dev Watts 3010 Hello World. You click on fork. You choose your, your uh, github.com, and you're probably only going to have one choice, which is the one that you just made. Um, and then you say you want to fork it into that account. And you can see I'm in my account now. I've got the 3010 30, Hello World. And it tells me that it's forked from SU Web Dev. So you've essentially made a copy. But in reality, you can, we, with forking, you actually have the potential to link it back to the, its source. And therefore, if we were working collaboratively, you could change code and, and check it back in. But at this point, you're, you're just going to work on this forked version. Um, here locally, or here on your own account. So now that we've got this forked, we can actually just read the markdown from our, our local uh, account here. So we have forked it, and now we are going to create a projects directory on the local machine. So I'm out here on terminal on a Mac. You could use, um, I would suggest you could use git bash if you're on Windows, or just use the terminal on the Mac. And um, with this command line, it's sometimes a little easier to, to be sure that you, you're doing what you intend than if you use sort of a GUI. But um, you can see I'm in a project. I mean, so here's my user space, the tilde, and then projects directory. And then I'm under video 3010. You might just have a create a projects directory um, and then uh, create a 3010. But to create a directory, um, you just use mkdir, and then let's just say I created a, a temp directory here. 
and I can just uh, do that and then if I ls you can see that the temp directory is right under there and if I cd'd into that temp change directory and pwd I am sitting in temp so if I wanted to create my new project under projects I would want to be sitting in projects so I might cd to tilde tilde slash which would take me to users and then once there I might make dir projects I'm not going to do that because I already have one um, and then I could cd into projects so now I'm in my user projects um, and then I at that point um, I am I've created this projects directory um, and then I'm going to open the directory created by cloning the repo in, in Visual Studio Code. So let's take a look at that. Say I go to Visual Studio Code. So let's create a new window here. And in here, I can um, use my control tick. And this works the same on Mac or Windows. Um, I'm using the bash here, so I'm using this command line. And PWD, I'm at my home directory, so I can CD into projects. Um, and you can see I have a lot of stuff going on in there. So I've created for myself, but you don't need to do this, a video 3010. And this is, so I'm sitting here in video 3010. You may be just in projects. And from here, I can do a get clone. And let me go grab this. So to clone, I'm going to cl click on this copy and that will allow me to get clone and then you can just paste that in there. If you're on Windows you might have to do a uh, right click paste. On Mac I can just do command C, command V, copy paste. I can just use a of command B. So we clone that here. Okay, and I happen to have a, an extra password. You probably won't have that. Um, so I'll enter that. And you can see that it's telling me that it enumerated some objects. It received them. Um, it, it checked them against what was already there. There wasn't anything there. The delta is zero. And if I list now, I've got Watts 3010 uh, Hello World. So let's check out where we are in terms of our instructions. So we have created a directory and cloned the repo. So we use that git clone command. Um, and now what I want to do is to open up that particular directory. So I am going to go, in my case, projects. You might just go to projects. You're going to see me go down into... Uh, projects video. I'm going to actually go all the way to this and I'm going to click on that Watts 3010 Hello World and click open. And the reason I do that is to center myself right at the root of this project, which is also the root of my website. So now what I see is a list of files that pretty well matches what you see here in this um, this list of files. So I have a hello world PNG, which happens to be the picture of what I'm trying to do. It, I have the readme, which is the instructions. And you can see here they're in markdown language. If I right click and open preview, they're going to look like the instructions that, um, that you're used to. Now you can change colors in uh, here if you don't like the dark background preferences. You can go into color theme and you could pick like a light color. So whatever works best for you visually. I tend to keep it dark just, um, just because it's easier on the eyes. So I've got these and then this git. This is actually a folder that contains all the information that keeps uh, my local git repository hooked up to my remote. So there is this ability for me to push and pull 
to that remote and it, the information is in this dot get and all dot directories are hidden so if I you know control tick and do an ls on this you don't see dot get or dot get ignore because they're hidden if I do a ls dash a you see all directories dot all the hidden directories um, but you, I've got it set so I can see them in here as well and then you have a license file and your readme file so now we can read in here, so we've got our, we're going to create an index file in the root of this directory, and we're going to use this hash or bang tab keystroke to initialize our HTML. So you can create a file either by clicking on new file, there's a new file and a new folder, there's a refresh and a collapse, so, but uh, I can either click on new file or I can right click in here and do new file here. So whichever way works best, we're going to create an index.html and index is the default so that when you are on a website and you just give it a directory, it looks for an index, index.html, and if it finds it, it will show it. So once we have that index.html, we can actually, if you've got your, if you're set up and you have live server installed, um, you can see I have live server plugin installed, um, I can right click and open with, open with live server. And this allows me to preview it locally. And you can see nothing's in there. I haven't put any code in there or done anything like that. So go back to the instructions and see. It's a little easier to read the preview than the, the raw markdown. So that's what I'm looking at here. So the first thing we do is we use this um, exclamation tab to kind of create our first. So I'm hitting exclamation tab. And this kind of gives us our basic HTML. And so we have doc type HTML, which tells the browser that this is HTML5. There are other doc types. Um, you can leave it off, and you'll probably still render, but you may get some funny results in some browsers, telling it that the language is English. We have a head section, which is unrendered code, where we can use meta tags. And you'll see we, we use this to link some of our resources in. Um, we have this viewport, which is going to allow, we're going to learn more about that with responsive web pages. And this uh, compatible IE Edge, which is just more um, for um, working with IE um, Internet Explorer. Um, and we have a title, which we're going to want to give it a name. We always want to have a title in our pages. This is what ends up showing up um, in the tab. So like if I come over here, and by the way, I've got my uh, Visual Studio set to autosave, so I'm not hitting save. If I, if I didn't have autosave, I had to do, I would have to do a command S in Mac or control S in Windows to save it. I can tell it's saved because this X tells me that it's a saved file, and it would be a zero if it wasn't saved. But once it's saved, um, we're still over here and nothing, but you can see that since we have a title now, it shows up, not very descriptive title, in the tab. So we've got that. And this all comes to you as just sort of a template for an HTML file to get you started. So we've got that, and the next thing that we want to do is modify the content of the title to be Hello World. So we'll just, and if you keep an eye on what's going on here, because I have it on autosave and live server updates, um, you can see it updated automatically. So it kind of keeps track of that you, when you change a file in your project or change the file that you're viewing, that it will update it automatically in the browser. And I'm using the Chrome browser here, but it will work on, on any browser that you're running it on. So the next thing that we want to do is create a CSS file. And we're just going to put this in the root of this project right now. Later on, um, you know, CSS directory. So we'll well, we can use the new uh, new folder, or we can right-click new folder. We'll call it CSS, and then it asks us to create a file CSS style.css. So here we're going to have this empty file, and then CSS again is so the HTML is giving us the structure of our document, and CSS allows us to add things like colors and fonts and and provide the look and feel, and you'll see later on much more important things like 
uh, the ability to have responsive pages, responsive layouts, um, host videos and audio, lots of things, or uh, design how that's going to look. Um, so a lot about the look and feel is what's controlled by CSS. Um, we're so we're going to we've got that file ready to go. Now we need to add a link to it into our um, HTML so that it's available to style our HTML, and that goes right below the title in the head section. We use the link and we use rel equals style sheet. So the relationship is oh, sorry rel. And the href equals, so href is our uh, HTTP reference, so where to find this file, and we're going to find it in CSS style. So you do notice that um, Visual Studio Code kind of gives you some uh, prompts to help you find files when you're referencing them in here. Um, and then we need to close that link. Notice there is no closing tag, like we'll see that some, there's no closing link tag, because the closing tags are really only necessary um, when you're going to have content in your markup. The link tag is just about pulling in a document, and the document is this style sheet. So the next thing that we want to do is, um, We've got the style sheet linked in. We're going to want to add a he h1, a header. You'll see there's going to there's actually a header tag, but h1, h through h6 are often referred to as headers. Also, I, I call them that anyway. They're head tags. They give you different uh, levels of heading where, and they are styled by default differently in the in the browser. So you might want to even try out h1 through h6 to see what the browser does with them. Um, so that means they're going to look a little different. But they're important more in terms of creating a hierarchy, with H1 being the top of the hierarchy, and you would really only ever have one H1 in your document. So we're going to put an H1 tag with a hello world in it. So now any rendered code goes within this body tag that was provided by our template thing. Uh, so we're just going to put in an h1 tag, and it has a closing tag. It got automatically created, and we are good. With we put we, now since there's a closing tag, we put content, and you can see right over here, it immediately updated the page. So now we have hello world, and you can just imagine from here. You this is how you can add content, structured content to your page. You can actually put unstructured content in there, and it will show up. But you don't want to do that, because there's a lot of reasons to have structured content, and you're going to learn about that in this program. Um, so the next thing we want to do, we've got our Hello World in there, is we're going to style this. And I'm providing here, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. So however Mac or Windows you want to do your copy-paste, uh, I'm using Control-C, for, and then I'll use Control-V for my copy-paste, um, or on Mac, Command-V, Command-C, Command-C, Command-V. So then I'm going to, what I'm saying here, though, is for the body of this document, I want the color to be red, which ends up being the foreground color, the color of the text, and I want the background color to be black. So let's get that into our CSS file. And what's going to happen? I get the immediate effect here. And so this is like you have now created a, a web page, a styled web page. And we were told, make sure all files are saved. If you have that auto save on, you're good. It just has to be checked. Um, and make sure, you know, you can also tell by looking at these X's. Um, so now we're ready to push our code up and then host it. So um, let's go ahead and here's the commands to push it up. So we're in if we if you've got your control tick open up here. So I've got my command line down here at the bottom. Um, I always start with the git status to let me know what I've got here to be checked in. And you can see I have the index HTML and then it only shows me that there's a CSS directory. 
but not all the files in it. But um, that, and you can see also in my color scheme that the changed files are showing up green here. Um, that indicates that anything in that directory would get checked in too. So what I what I so I can see I, that I'm going to be adding those files to my repository. Now, um, when you're adding to the repository, I show get add dot, and that means add any files in my current directory. That's what dot means, and any files in directories below. So that's just a shortcut, and it's not always recommended. I mean, you'll read that you should just add by file name. So I can say get add index.html. I can do files one at a time. I'm a little bit lazy, and so I use get add dot. You, if I do a get status now, you'll see that that file I added is now green, but these files are not are red, and that's because the git add stages those files, making them ready to be committed. Um, but because I just did that one file by name, it's all, that's the only thing that got staged. If I do a git add dot, it's going to take anything in this directory, which is index.html, which is already staged, and anything below it, which is should include that style CSS. And if I do a git status now, you can see that that got staged, that CSS style. So I typically just do the git add dot. And then you want to create a commit, and this will move it from staged to committed. So commit dash m, and you give it a description, uh, write first code, and um, enter. And so it tells you that you know these have been inserted and basically committed to my local repo. And so if I do a get status now, you can see there's no files listed, but it tells me that I can use git push to publish your local commits. So if I do git push, of course it asks me because I have a password on this. You may not have that. And then it tells me that it's pushing, and it's pushing to master. So that looks good. Um, and if I do a get status now, it reads that it's all clear. So working tree clean. So now if I go back out to GitHub um, to my Hello World repository, let's see, here I am, and refresh this, you can see that my file got checked in. So I have my index and my CSS. And now I'm ready. So I've got the code available, and this is the URL to when you're asked for a code repository, it will be a github.com slash your account slash repo name, that URL, and you are going to always be asked to turn in this URL and the hosted URL. So this is the code. Um, to set up hosting, I'm going to click on settings, scroll down, and in this GH pages, which stands for GitHub pages, I'm going to choose the source to be the master branch. So I click on that, and it refreshed the page. And now when I look at GH Pages, it's showing me that it's going to publish it at this HTTP www. Well, I'm, because I'm using, I'm using a DNS name, which you're going to learn about, I also need to enforce HTTPS. You won't have to do that if you're not using a DNS name. But if I refresh that again, we typically are publishing to HTTPS not HTTP, because we want encryption. So our, our pages are moving across the web encrypted. And when this turns green like that, the background, it means it's published. And I'm going to open in a new tab. And here's my work. And it is now sitting on my account, slash Watts3010World. And this would be the URL I would turn in for my hosted code. So that is how um, we create that's how we create a web page um, and follow these instructions. So let's go back up here. One thing more that I would do is I would I would copy this hosted page into my buffer. So I'm doing a control C here, command C, and go back home to my repo code um, page. And in this, I'd use this edit button, and I would paste the website in. So I paste that 
hosted website. And the thing that does for you is that if someone just knows your, they don't know your hosted page, but they know your the URL to your coded page, they can quickly get to your hosted page. There's a link there, so that opens up Hello World. So that is Hello World in the web world. And um, there's definitely a lot of reading that you can do, a lot of uh, information to kind of understand all the details behind the technologies we're using here. But this is how you can get your website up and hosted on GH Pages.